Greetings, everyone. I'm Sammy, and we have an awesome story for you today. It is about Elisha and the double portion anointing. Remember last week we told you about Elijah and dealing with the prophets of Baal. So today, before God takes Elijah to heaven in a chariot, Elisha asked, to get a double portion of Elijah's anointing. So, after Elijah is taken to heaven, his cloak falls, and Elisha picks it up and begins where Elijah left off. The rest of the team will be here shortly to get things rolling today. I'll see you next week. Hello everybody. I'm JB, the Bible Junkie, and I have our memory verse today. It's found in the book of 2 Kings chapter 2, and verses 9b through 10. It says, Tell me, what can I do for you before I am taken from you? Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit, Elisha replied. You have asked a difficult thing, Elijah said. Yet if you see me when I am taken from you, it will be yours otherwise, it will not. 
2 Kings chapter 2, and verses 9b through 10. NIV. All right, everyone. At the count of three. I want all of you to say the verses with me. Ready? One, two, and three. Tell me, what can I do for you before I am taken from you? Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit, Elisha replied. You have asked a difficult thing, Elijah said, yet if you see me when I am taken from you, it will be yours otherwise, it will not. 2 Kings chapter 2, and verses 9b through 10. NIV. That was awesome today. I know that you will really enjoy this Bible story today. Not only did God grant Elisha a double anointing, but Elisha was able to do twice as much as Elijah did in his lifetime. Where Elijah did eight miracles, Elisha did over 32 miracles. The rest of the team is coming to share a whole lot more with you guys today. I'm JV, the Bible Junkie, and I will be back next week. Hello everybody, I'm Clyde. I want to welcome you here to my clubhouse today. Thinking about this story I find myself wanting to ask, why did Elisha ask for double portion? In the language of those times, he was asking for the eldest son's inheritance, which was called a double portion. This was his humble request. Elisha knew his own weaknesses. Without a double portion of spirit, he could not carry out the mission of being God's prophet. You see, back in those days, only the oldest son was given the double portion blessing by the father. So, when Elisha asked Elijah for the double portion, Elijah's response was, You have asked a difficult thing. In our memory verse today, in verse 10, it says, Yet if you see me when I am taken from you, it will be yours, otherwise it will not. So, when Elijah's mantle, or coat as we refer to it, fell, Elisha picked it up and went to the Jordan to see if what Elijah did would work for him. And it did. I'll be back next week. Hello everyone, I'm PF, and as it has been said, we have a great story today, so let me get right to it. Now, when Elisha used the coat to hit the Jordan River and part it, Elisha knew that he had received the blessings from God, but he wasn't aware of how much of the blessing yet. Now, this is one of the greatest biblical examples of a double portion anointing, and that is the prophet Elisha. He was told four times to stay behind and follow Elijah no farther, yet Elisha followed him until the end, passing through Gilgal, Bethel, Jericho, and Jordan. No matter how many times Elijah told Elisha to not follow, and Elijah said, don't, don't, don't follow me, don't come any further. He continued to follow. Have you ever wanted something so bad that you would almost do anything to get it? Well, this was Elisha. He saw what God did with Elijah, that he wanted a double portion of the blessing Elijah had. So what is really meant by a double portion of the Holy Spirit? Okay, so their spin on the double portion isn't that Elisha was granted twice Elijah's spirit. Follow me on this one, okay? But twice the Holy Spirit, no. F again, follow me, okay? It meant that there were two Holy Spirits knocking around inside Elisha? No, not really. There's only one twice as much. In other words, here it is. Are you ready? As Elijah was empowered, God gave him twice what Elijah had. And Elisha was able to do more. All right, now, Professor Whoopi will be here shortly to share more with you. And I'll see you next time. Bye. God using ordinary people to do extraordinary things. So you can try this at home. Just watch for now. You can take a pencil and hold the pencil between your thumbs. 
Without removing their thumbs from the pencil, you have to keep your thumbs on the pencil. Then you need to turn your hands so that you can get both their thumbs like this underneath, but you cannot take your thumbs off the pencil. Keep practicing till you can accomplish this interesting task. Remember God can take on ordinary pencil and make it do something extraordinary. How much more can God take you and make you into an extraordinary person to be used of God? See you next time. Bye. Greetings everyone, I am Professor Whoopi and I'm here to whoopie up a big one for you today. Well, this is a wonderful story of the blessing that God brought upon Elisha and let's go to the book of 2 Kings chapter 2 verses 9b through 14 in the NIV. It says, when they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, tell me what can I do for you before I am taken from you? Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit, Elisha replied. You have asked a difficult thing, Elijah said. Yet if you see me when I am taken from you, it will be yours. Otherwise, it will not. As they were walking along and talking, Together, suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elisha saw this and cried out, My father, my father, the chariots and the horsemen of Israel. And Elisha saw him no more. Then he took hold of his garments and tore in two. Elisha then picked up Elijah's cloak that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. He took the cloak that had fallen from Elijah and struck the water with it. Where now is the Lord, the God of Elijah? He asked, and when he struck the water, it divided to the right and to the left, and he crossed over. All right, whoa, that was great. That was in 2 Kings chapter 2 verses 9b through 14 in the NIV. Where did God tell Elijah to anoint Elisha? Well, before Elijah was taken to heaven, God commanded him to anoint Elisha in a cave on Mount Horeb. God directed Elijah to anoint Hazel as king over Syria, Jehu king over Israel, and Elisha as the prophet in his place. This is where the commission started. Whoa, I like that. Now, there was no oil that was poured over them as some of the customs were of that day, nor were their words spoken, but it seems that the gesture spoke for itself and was understood by both Elijah and Elisha. So, a chariot of fire comes like a whirlwind, comes and separates the two. Elisha is seeing Elijah being taken up into heaven and then sees him no more. Yet the mantle or the coat that Elijah was wearing falls and Elisha picks it up. Now notice, he doesn't put it on but he carries it to the Jordan and strikes the water with it and the water parts for him to cross. I believe from that time on, Elisha put on the coat and began to see God do miraculous miracles through him. Now, the rest of the team will be here shortly to share more with you concerning our story today, but it is time for me to say goodbye. Avirase, arrivederci, hasta la vega. Hasta la vida. Oh, oh, oh. Hula hula. Oh, last but not least, as always, Aruba boo. Whoa, oh, oh, oh. Don't ever forget that God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, and Professor Whoopi and friends, we love you, and we want to see the best for you. Goodbye.
Elijah did eight miracles. Some say there were up to 14. He stopped the rain for three years. The one we highlighted last week was the prophets of Baal, how God answered with fire to destroy the altar, while the prophets of Baal failed to get their God to do anything. Now I want us to look at Elisha. How many miracles Elisha did? Some say Elijah did eight miracles and Elisha 16. Some say that he did as many as 32 miracles. Elisha's miracles not only double Elijah's, but seem to parallel and multiply them in their themes, elements, and language. Because of the many miracles, we will cover a few. What was Elisha's first miracle? Healing of the waiters. Bitter. The first miracle that he did was to restore the waters that surrounded the city of Jericho. The waters were apparently poisoned, but Elisha added salt to it and then told the people that God made the water safe for them to drink. From that day on, no one died or became ill after drinking the water near Jericho. Increase of widow's oil, leprosy of Naaman healed, making iron to swim. There were 32 total miracles that Elisha did. What was Elisha's last miracle? The most notable part of this miracle occurred when a dead man was hastily thrown into Elisha's tomb. When the man's body touched Elisha's, he was revived and came back to life. The common explanation is that this miracle occurred because of the anointing of the prophet's bones. In conclusion, Elisha did receive more than a double portion of the blessings. I'll be back next week. Greetings, everybody. I'm Zach with a few final thoughts today. There are three things I want to share with you. First, what is Elisha's message in the Bible? In addition to being a miracle worker, Elisha was a political power. He prophesied the defeat of the Moabites as a result of a huge rainfall and advised Joram how to defeat Ben-Hadad, king of Syria. Second, the impact of Elisha in the Bible Elisha's prophetic ministry included works of healing and restoration. The biblical record also shows Elisha bringing joy to people through miracles from God. His gentle spirit enabled him to have a positive influence on the lives of many in Israel and is revealed in several illustrations in 2 Kings chapters 4 through chapter 6. Finally, how do you walk in the prophetic anointing? Walking in the prophetic anointing also requires us to live a life of consecration, prayer, and fasting, so we can maintain the presence of God in our lives. Failure to do this will result in us not being able to accomplish the purpose for which we were created. God has called every one of us to be an impact to someone in our life. So, let God use you to help others. I'll be back next week. Hello everyone, I'm Ben James, as you host today. We are looking the miracles of both Elijah and Elisha recorded in the Bible. Elijah was full of the Spirit of God and used of the Lord greatly during his time. He was also the one prophet that never died but was taken up to heaven in a fiery chariot. Elisha was his student who then took over the mantle after Elijah was taken to heaven. Let's get to our group to see what they have for us today. Greetings, everybody. We are here to share with you about these two great prophets in the Bible. First, Elijah. The northern nation of Israel had turned away from the Lord to worship Baal, and King Ahab had formed an alliance with Sidon by marrying their princess, Jezebel. Elijah was sent to show Israel the evil of their ways and encourage them to return to the Lord. Elijah stops the rain, multiplies the oil, brings a boy to life, brings down rain, brings down fire on the altar and on Ahab's soldiers, and splits the Jordan River. Several times he found himself thrown into jail and kept there for some time. Elijah's ministry lasted a mere 24 years, but he is considered to be one of the greatest prophets in Old Testament times.
His greatness had nothing to do with his family tree, his education, his personal wealth or assets. In fact, James emphasizes this point by saying, Elia was a man just like Us. Let there be no mistake Elia's greatness stem it from God's greatness. This is because he dedicated his life in service to God and glorified his holy name, especially at a time when such behavior was politically and religiously incorrect. He stood up when no one else would stand because they were afraid. Elijah was devoted to God, deeply concerned and grieved by the idolatrous behavior of his people. Elijah knew that God's wrath toward Israel's behavior was long overdue. Elijah wanted to make a difference, but he recognized that he was just a youth and powerless to do anything about it. He had no influence, no pulpit, and no money. To him, it seemed as if there was nothing he could do except pray. When we come back, we will focus on Elisha's miracles that he did after Elijah is brought to heaven. See you guys. Whoa! These guys are really getting at it again. I love to hear the deep conversations these guys can have, yet they explain it very simple. Well, without any further delay, let's get back to them. Hi everyone, we're back. Elijah was a great prophet of God, but his student Elisha was going to do more than Elijah ever did. That's right. Remember he wanted a double portion blessing. And when Elijah went up to heaven, his mantle fell and Elisha picked it up and went to the Jordan River to test it out. When he did, he realized that God did pass on Elijah's mantle of blessing on him. But as of yet, he wasn't aware of how much blessing it would be. That's right. It was the double that Elisha was asking for. A cycle of miracle stories arose around Elisha. He was said to have made bitter water sweet, revived the son of a Shunammite woman from death by breathing into his mouth and lying on top of him. He also helped a woman to avoid giving up her two sons to a creditor who would make them slaves. He informed the Syrian captain Naaman how to be cured from his skin disease and many other similar actions. As it was stated in our story, Elisha did 16 miracles, yet some say as many as 32, which is a great example of how God blessed him beyond Elijah's time to do what needed to be done. I do love the story of the time when Elisha was dead and in his tomb. A dead man was hastily thrown into Elisha's tomb. When the man's body touched Elisha's, he was revived and came back to life. The common explanation is that this miracle occurred because of the anointing of the prophet's bones. Just goes to show that when God is in something, anything can happen. Right. So for us today, we can make an impact right where we are. We don't have to wait for God to call us. If we are following Him and living for Him, then let's always be open to the leading of the Holy Spirit and let Him use us to minister and help others. Until next time from all of us, goodbye. This was great today. I learned a lot more about these two great prophets in the Old Testament. Remember that if you're a believer in Jesus, you can be used of the Holy Spirit to do whatever God calls you to do for Him. Until next time, may the Lord God bless you. Well, this story was it is really awesome, just like awesome sauce. Well, that's a story for another time. When I look at this story, I see this Elisha guy who Elijah told him several times to stay back and go away. Yet, Elisha was persistent. That a $25 word for some of you, this word means he continued to follow Elijah even when he was told to stop. He kept on following him everywhere. I guess you could say that Elisha saw what Elijah was doing and he decided that he wanted to know more about God and what Elijah did. So this is why he was following him around and he would not leave his side. That reminds me of us. How many times have we seen someone who is following God and for some reason possibly we have been impressed to see what they are doing and why? So we follow them and watch closely to see what they do. Maybe even to the point that they become our teacher, helping us to follow God as they are. 
This is what was happening to Elisha. That's why he asked Elijah for a double portion blessing. Here's the bottom line for all of us. If we want to be used of God, all we have to do is follow God with all our heart. Live for Him and allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. It doesn't matter how old or how young you are. Just be led by God. All right. Well, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.